area. So let's take a look at extract and and basically follow that logical progression to shadow box. So we'll go to geometry shadow box and I'm just going to turn it on. As soon as I turn it on, it has a set thing. And it's, it's all set. So basically, my brain just stopped working there. <laughs> basically, wherever the geometry is, you get your mask, top and bottom. If I come in here and I clear this mask, control, click, and drag, it goes away. And I have to draw another one. But I kind of liked where the mask was in the uh, in the top. Bottom seems fine. I don't see any problem with that. But this is what I need to change. So what I'll do is just turn perspective off. I'll press control for mask and I will use mask circle. And then try to drag that out so it's as contained as possible okay whoops I'm gonna control alt so I can just remove that mask and I'm gonna do that again pressing spacebar to move this Okay, there we go. That's within range. Now the one variable that's kind of important to keep in mind, let's say for example if I come in and I make this really large, notice that we're not getting the sides here and that's because those sides are not being represented by the bottom. Nine times out of ten you never need that bottom. And that bottom can cause you problems that you're not aware of because it's literally clipped the sides of this. So you usually will want to delete that, in which case it's just control, press alt, drag something out, and there you go. Shadowbox will still pull from these guys, but this bottom one won't screw with it. So I'm going to mask that out again and try this. One second, I'm going to sneeze, I think. Okay. All right, there we go. We've got a bit of a round guy. We're good to go. If you really wanted, you could just mask this entire thing. That way, it's a big, huge blur. Uh, let, we can unmask to right there. And, uh, and we're going to get the full width and, and all of that stuff. So that'll be quite nice, uh, full roundness of it. But now if you want it to be hollow, this is also something where it can work. You just have to drag this out, kind of small, press Alt, and now you're working with a hollow gun. So you drop out a shadow box, we have a hole all the way through, and now we can do some work with, say, the clip brush. Control Shift, select Clip Circle, drag this guy out, okay, and then make sure you press Alt so that you pull that out. and then don't pull alt and just get a nice clean surface there uh... then we can go control shift uh... clip curve cut that off cut that off and now we have a barrel let's turn perspective on of course we are missing the rectangular piece that it goes into which we can do with shadow box we can do with mesh extraction uh, or you can do with a primitive, either one. But you see kind of the evolution of stuff here to the point where now suddenly, you know, we've got mesh extraction going to shadow box.
and then shadow box eventually going to DynaMesh for more soft surface stuff, and then panel loops coming up for hard surface. All right, so let me check in with you guys. Uh, Johannes, it does look like the uh, circle center mask wasn't there. Could be the version I'm using. Uh, Michael, yeah, this is definitely a like a rifle, uh, a range finder, so to speak. It really works for that. Okay, let's see. Michael has found... Yeah, they've moved things in here, but anyways. Okay, you guys doing okay? We're covering old school stuff. But it is very, very, very important that you be clear on this stuff before we move forward. So any questions or are you uh, solid and we're ready to move on? Give me a shout out. Uh, Johannes, is there a way to get radial symmetry to use wherever the brush center is as a locus? Or is it only at its origin? Let me see if I understand your question. Okay, transform, let's say, yeah, ray, and the question is, the center to radiate out from there or to radiate out from the world space? I'm going to click some buttons, but I do not think that that's been implemented. Posable symmetry is not going to apply. I'm going to have to say no, yeah, Johannes. Okay. Vincent's ready to go. Paul finds it useful. Within range. Uh, okay. Donna's telling me to move on and solid. Thanks. And shadow box. Radiate. Yeah. Good to shoot. All right. Johannes is ready. Daniel says, get moving. And uh, Ronnie asks, how can I do a perfect circle mask? And no, we cannot start over. <laughs> okay. So how do you do a perfect circle? Anybody want to take a gander? Select a perfect circle alpha. Use transpose probably to get that. Oh would be very wise to not turn symmetry on. That'll definitely get it to you. Also come in, let's see if drag dots is out. Yeah, there it is. So you can press control, you change your stroke to drag dots or drag rectangle. Select your alpha just your focal shift is important so you might want to set that and then you have to be mindful of RGB and let's oh press control and adjust it there you go so again perfect circle you're just changing your stroke you're putting it in an alpha because that means you're really serious about it and you're making sure your focal shift doesn't have anything that would allow it to kind of soften the edges Okay, let me set that back to normal. 